So if you all can see me and hear me, then you are in the right place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this session started because I definitely need to read these amazing bios. Um, so welcome everyone. Welcome to the final night of RSDSA's virtual conference. I'm Alexis Davis. I'm the social media manager here at RSDSA. And I am going to go ahead and get this session started. So the title of this session is Neurologic Rehabilitation for CRPS Patients. And our first speaker this evening is Dr. Kinsley Vandermeer. She grew up as the daughter of a successful chiropractor outside of Johannesburg, South Africa. She immigrated to the U.S. in 1994 at the age of 20 and received her Doctor of Chiropractic degree at Parker College of Chiropractic in Dallas, Texas. Upon graduation, she set out to study postgraduate techniques and courses that would allow her to treat chronically and acutely ill patients without any hope. Dr. Katinka has lectured extensively around the world and has been recognized by her profession for her outstanding contributions to chiropractic. In 2019, she received the Global Chiropractor of the Year Award in Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Katinka is the author of Taming the Beast, A Guide to Conquering Fibromyalgia, and Putting Out the Fire, New Hope for CRPS, available on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. She was also a co-author of the best-selling Wake Up, Miracles of Healing from Around the World, which was recently published. Dr. Katinka is the founder and CEO of the Sparrow Clinic in Fayetteville, Arkansas. She has treated patients from 47 U.S. states and 34 countries to date. She has gained a worldwide reputation for her significant success in treating non-retractable pain syndromes and chronic pain. And we also have Dr. Hanalee Vandermeer. She's also a doctor of chiropractic. She has completed 300 graduate course hours in functional medicine and has analyzed blood work of hundreds of complex regional pain syndrome and other chronic pain patients. She is Dr. Katinka's sister and has her own independent practice, forming part of the Sparrow Clinic team. She has become known all over the world for her natural yet powerful approaches to treating viral and bacterial infections and systemic inflammation. Dr. Hanali typically prefers to avoid the public eye and is much more comfortable analyzing lab results and doing research than speaking to a group of people. However, she understands the great need for her findings to be shared with the chronic pain community today. And we are so happy to have the two of you here this evening. Now I'm gonna hop off camera and I'm gonna let the two of you take it from here. And also remember, if you are leaving questions in the chat, we will definitely get to those questions at the end of the presentation. Um, but yeah, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you so much for the great introduction, Alexis. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to address a community that uh, my gosh, I want to say it means a lot to me, but honestly, it is the passion that has driven my career for so many years. I am singularly obsessed uh, with helping the hopeless feel hope again, which is the most powerful patient that you can, the most powerful moment that you can have with any patient. Now, often people will say, well, you're a car and trust me, I've heard it, I get it, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm actually proud not to be a medical doctor, not that there's anything wrong, we have amazing medical doctors out there, but I uh, was raised and then educated with a different philosophy uh, where we look at the whole person, you know, you are not just trained in parts like a GI specialist or a neurosurgeon, where that becomes your speciality, but rather you're trained with this concept and believe that the body is designed to be incredible, to heal itself, to be amazing, and every part affects every single other part. So you may have a problem with your calf affecting CRPS in your shoulder, or your GI tract, yes, absolutely is connected to your CRPS, and that is missed allopathically because we tend to focus on smaller and smaller parts. Um, the more of an expert you are, the, the more you know about smaller areas of the body. And um, also this belief that the body starts messing up, um, it has a condition that it's unable to overcome, and now we have to intervene from the outside. And that intervention may be a spinal cord stimulator or medication 
or ketamine um, or nerve blocks, you name it, is in this. So uh, a little bit about myself. Ten years ago, I treated my first CRPS patient, and his name is Carlos. Now, prior to that, I'm the daughter of a chiropractor, and my dad was very successful. I was born and raised in South Africa, and my dad never stopped studying. Um, he was incredibly successful. I had tons of patients, but all about the world to learn new things. And I'll never forget one day I said, Dad, why do you not just quit a day and say, I know enough already and I am successful. And I will never forget his words. He said, Katinka, it is not the 10 out of 10 patients that you help that drive you. It's the two out of 10 patients that you cannot help. And that certainly has proven to be true for me. I mean, um, some of the most incredible breakthroughs we've had in our practice over the last 10 years came about because we were stuck with a patient. Um, when you truly care about the patient sitting in front of you, you don't just see their future with CRPS or Eros Downer syndrome, but you understand that they have circles of people around them. They have children, they have loved ones, they have partners and husbands and wives and parents. And those people's lives are taken down with the patients if we can't get them better. And man, that stuff haunts you. It's a challenge, but uh, also more than a challenge. It's my very lifeblood to figure out obstacles. Now, we have gained uh, quite a reputation for treating the difficult neurologic cases like complex regional pain syndrome. We counted the other day, we do pins on a map and a world map, and we actually pulled all the pins out and counted all the holes. And we are just under 400 CRPS patients since we got that map 10 years ago. So we have had our share of CRPS and errors and those more CRPS than EDS patients. That's a more recent development in our practice. And when you treat so many CRPS patients with a holistic approach and you do careful examination of their neurologic functional tests and their x-rays and their lab work, you start to see patterns over and over again. And when you see those, they become very meaningful after a while. And so that is information that I think you guys need to hear. Often, CRPS can be so isolating because you're bounced from doctor to doctor to doctor. And you know when you walk into a doctor's office that they just sometimes went to the back and Googled CRPS, um, that they know the very minimum, you know, the Wikipedia entry, the stuff that first comes up in Google. Um, I once had a patient that actually said that. She said, I can tell if my doctor just Googled it because I know what the first few Google entries are. And then they misunderstand and misdiagnose, you know, um, so often still today we'll hear, yeah, CRPS doesn't spread like that. It doesn't become full body or it doesn't affect your sleep. It doesn't affect your GI tract. And so a big part of what we promote, and we call that the secret sauce in our office, is that we promote a camaraderie among our patients. So when you walk in, you're embraced in this loving group of other patients going through the same stuff that you are. They're having bad days, they're in pain, they, they've walked this road for two years, one year, five years, 10 years, 24 years, and they understand better than anyone who loves you what kind of pain you're experiencing, what your hopes are, what your fears are, uh, that you're afraid that this is going to be the rest of your life and sometimes when you're up two three four o'clock in the morning you you're the only person that you have i mean you go online and you can talk to other people but it is very rare to have that community of fellow patients uh, so our system was developed over 10 years of careful trial and error we've tried things we've dropped things I want as close to 100% success rate with every therapy that we can get. And usually therapies were adopted because we were stuck and then we tried and tried and tried a thing and then magically we broke through with that patient and then we knew we were on to something. So 
Over time, we've put together about 15 different machines and technologies and treatment systems and techniques. Um, Dr. Honnelly's blood analysis, and we have put this system together. Now, sometimes you guys would say, why can't you just take this to Australia or bring it to Minnesota or you know, bring it to Boston? It's selfish that you're sitting on the system. But two things I want to address today is, number one, our staff was handpicked over many years. They're sometimes the top of their field, like our head therapist, Bryce, that does what's the equivalent of our physical therapy that's done with a direct current, um, is highly trained. He worked with some of the best athletes in the world, top athletes, you guys would all know them, some gold medalists. And he chose CRPS because that was his passion. So we hire people for that passion and caring and empathy for patients. And we believe very often we can teach the technology, but it takes a long time. And it takes a long time, not working with everyday patients, but working with complex regional pain syndrome patients and other complicated neurologic cases and intricate training. So to just take our technologies and systems into an office, all 15 of them, without that being backed up by the correct staff with the experience that we have is very difficult. Um, another objection or question we get is, where are the studies? If this is so amazing, why does Cleveland not know about this? Um, and the thing is, over time, I have gotten a reputation. Some of the top CRPS doctors have heard my name, but it's such a foreign concept medically that I think a lot of doctors just can't wrap their minds around how this stuff works. Um, as for lack of research, um, people have misconceptions of how that works too. And I'm actually learning on the ground because Kent State University agreed to first start studying our work spring up next year. And it all came about because a PhD um, candidate at Kent State who suffered from CRPS came in and went into remission through our system. And she was going to study uh, Lou Gehrig's disease and instead decided to bring our work out to the world so we can get published. But I was uh, excited and said, we gotta do the whole system in all 15 treatments. And she said, oh, no, no, it doesn't work like that. We can only do one thing at a time. So we're gonna start with vagus nerve stimulation. And if that is successful, then we get to add one more thing. And this is this first step to get from one to two treatments being used together can take two to three years. So there's a massive amount of work that goes into it. Uh, if you do it privately, uh, we're talking about one to two million dollars, which is a massive amount of money. And so do not let the fact that there is lack of research about a specific thing always turn you away from it. What's much more important to me is to ask the question, how many other people have gotten better through the system? Has it helped other people? Have they stayed in remission? Are they real people? I want to talk to other people. Um, to that end, I wanted to bring at least one of our patients on today. Um, I'm actually not sure how long ago she uh, finished treatment. I'm going to ask her in a second. Her name is Jackie Hausch, and uh, she is from Cincinnati. I wanted her to hear just the voice of her tonight. Hi, Jackie. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You always look so bright and happy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing great, yeah. How long ago did you finish treatment, Jackie? Um, I've been in remission since June of 2017. So um, I finished about, I guess, coming up on three and a half years here. So. Oh, time flies. It does. <laughs> and yeah. you had lower body CRPS. Yes, it was mainly in my lower body, and it did occasionally come up to my right arm and chest and things um, as it got worse before I got to you. But the worst part was lower body, um, especially my right right side, right foot, right leg. Yeah. Jackie, before me, how many doctors did you see? Um, I was one of the lucky ones. I only saw two doctors. Um, and the second one, 
I baffled the first one, and the second one knew what it was as soon as he saw my purple um, shriveled up leg. Because <laughs> um, it was a completely different color than my other leg, and it had the modeling and the temperature difference, and um, luckily he knew what CRPS was. He was actually a sports medicine doctor. Um, so I got diagnosed by him. Yeah. And when you when saw me, yeah. were you hopeful? Were you skeptical? Um, my husband was hopeful, <laughs> and I was I was scared to come. And I have three small kids at home, and logistically, I just felt like it is impossible to get there. Um, you know, it's not cheap and, um, getting, what would I do with my kids and school and my husband working and all of that, it felt impossible to me, but, um, luckily I have an amazing support system and my mom and my mother-in-law jumped in and they came and they helped and homeschooled my girls. So they came with me and we just made it happen. And I'm so glad I did because I have my life completely back now. Tell me what your mission looks like for you, Jackie. Um, have you had injuries? Yes, I have. Um, so I actually fell down the stairs um, shortly after getting back, well, several months after getting back, and it didn't even cause a flare. So I have like a permanent dent in my shin, and I was all bruised up everywhere, but I did not even have a CRPS flare. Um, that's probably my worst injury. I've had some like trips and things like that, and I've had no recurrence of the CRPS. Yeah. So now, if you um, if you stumble or twist your ankle, do you still have that freak out moment? Uh oh, it's going to come back, or have you learned to trust trust your recovery? Um, I I trust my recovery now. At first, I had that initial moment of. <gasps> A, an initial freak out moment and then I'd be like, no, I'm fine. Um, but now I'm, I'm confident in my remission and I'm confident that I'm going to stay good. Um, I mean, it's been this long and, and I've been doing great. Yeah. I went from not being able to walk, um, drive, uh, take my kids to any of their lessons or anything. And basically was in bed for six months straight. Um, to going hiking in national parks all summer this summer. And um, yeah, driving them wherever they need to go and hosting people at my house and um, being able to do all the things that I wasn't able to do before. Jackie, um, thank you so much for sharing your story tonight with others because in the CRPS community, it is so rare to hear about someone who's in remission. Um, what kind of, what wisdom would you have for a patient watching this tonight and thinking Arkansas may as well be on the other side of the world? Um, I would say do whatever it takes to get to the Sparrow Clinic. Um, do a GoFundMe page, do whatever you have to do to get there. It is completely worth every single sacrifice of your time and your money and missing family, missing friends to get your entire life back. It's three months of hard work in return for your whole life and completely pain-free life. Um, so I would say do whatever it takes because there's hope there. Thank you so much, Jackie. It's so good. To see you. you too. I miss you guys. Miss you too. Miss you. Bye. Bye bye. All right. So if you guys uh, go on to the Spiro Clinic Facebook page, we have a new um, install that we brought in some months ago that says, Where are they now? And it shows patients in all various years of remission. Uh, I think the patient we treated that at CRPS the longest, I uh, had it for 30 years. Uh, we recently had Eric from Tasmania, had it for 24 years, and um, he's now in Oregon and doing fantastic. 
uh, still working through opioid withdrawal, but he's fighting his completely remission, full body. So and I want you guys to think, well, Jackie didn't have it long enough because there's this myth out there that if you had CRPS for longer than a year, then you're just out of luck. It's there to say. Um, and we have seen that that's not necessarily true. We don't even pay attention to how long she has or has not had it. Um, our system, guys, so um, I'm just going to touch on the highlights because it's pretty complicated, but I know that you're all curious. So I have an associate doctor, and our job is to do vagus nerve stimulation. It's very light touch. It's done on the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. Um, we have not been able to find a device that can uh, replicate exactly how powerful the technique is that we're using. Uh, we actually got a patent on it just to protect it and taught that for the first time in New York uh, this last January, I believe, to 20 doctors. So we are starting to treat, uh, teach it. The vagus nerve is a cranial nerve that communicates with your GI tract and all of these organs on your inside. It's also like a second spinal cord that controls inflammation in your central nervous system. So when that nerve can communi communicate again, sometimes instantly when we open it up, the patient's pain will drop a significant amount, even though in the beginning that relief typically doesn't last. We just repeat it over and over. So that sets the table because our patients work incredibly hard. And as you know, when you have CRPS, you can just go for a walk or cook a Thanksgiving and not many days after. So the fine art of what we do is calming down the nervous system and then working the nervous system super hard. And like that, I always picture it like uh, climbing up an um, ice cliff with ice picks. You put the one pick in and you drag up, you put the next pick in until you peak. So that's sort of our approach. Dr. Hana Lee analyzes blood work, lab results, and she's going to tell you more about that. She doesn't like fancy, expensive tests. She looks at the simple stuff. And the thing is, many doctors will look at your blood work and not see the patterns that she is able to spot. So we have found a massive connection with viral and or bacterial infections with CRPS patients. More about that later. Um, we use neuromuscular re-education. When you looked up to a direct current, think of Superman coming into your body. Um, the closest you have to compare it to is Russian stimulation, but it's not Russian stimulation. It really is uh, a machine that's unique. It's FDA approved. And if you guys see our videos where someone's in a wheelchair and then 12 weeks later they're running and people will say that's not real, look at the muscle atrophy being gone. It's because each second on this machine is equal to 250 physical therapy seconds. So it really amplifies what we can do in physical therapy to program in correct movement patterns. Uh, we have a special system, it's not manual massage that opens the lymphatic system detoxification because it's very important especially if patients have been on a ton of meds that the liver gets cleaned um, we use sound waves to treat scar tissue and when i say scar tissue any tissue that has been normal uh, moving up normally is going to develop adhesions and so it's very important to move that abnormal tissue out of the way turn it into healthy tissue again moves through the body like a wave and if it encounters that abnormal tissue um, scar tissue even in your toe may affect healing in your upper body because we're dealing with this whole body approach uh, dr hanali also addresses food sensitivities um, foods that increase your inflammation um, we use a brain therapy that uses EEG equipment to measure your brainwave activity. And then it shows that activity to the brain so that the brain can see its own mistakes and correct it. Your nervous system is very interesting. It was designed after a while to start ignoring things that don't get fixed. So it's like your kind of become deaf to that when it really bugs other people the brain is like that and so we have to show the injury to the brain so that the brain can then get busy and work on that injury uh, so those are some of
strategies that we use, we have a ton more. But what is important is that each of these therapies exponentially make each other more powerful. Think about a team of people pulling a rope. You can pull super hard and not get the job done. But if you have 14 teammates backing you up, now you become very powerful. Sometimes people will say, well, I've tried that therapy and it never worked for me, but then I did it as part of your system and all of a sudden it really worked. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because it's not working alone. It has other things to help it. Um, now, one other objection that we've heard a lot, and I'm certainly not tone deaf to that, and I want to address that today, is the cost um, of this system and the 12 weeks. It's usually about a 12-week period of time that you hear in Arkansas. What people don't understand is that um, patients really question the cost of things as long as insurance is covering that. I think the cost of an average spinal cord stimulator initially now is about $85,000. Um, inpatient pediatric pain programs for three weeks is about $30,000. And people don't think about it because insurance cover, companies cover that. And they don't cover the majority of what we do. Now, is that fair? It is not. Is it my choice? It is not. I always tell patients, guys, I could make a ton of money if that's what I was about, if I could open more clinics and have more people come and everybody could come because insurance is covering it. It's not that we don't accept insurance. It's that insurance companies don't accept us, if that makes sense. And for us to stay safe and play by the rules, some of our codes have to say unlisted procedure. Um, we can't classify it as something else that insurance will recognize just so that insurance will pay for it. For example, the vagus nerve stimulation. So I wanted to touch on that. Uh, on that. I am um, going to soon hand the floor to Dr. Hana Lee, but I just want to show you guys some quick before and after pictures that were actually taken in our clinic, because this is one of my favorite parts. Um, can we bring those pictures up, Haley? Yes. You guys will recognize some of these limbs when you see them, and keep in <laughs> mind, the majority of these people uh, were here for about We like to take before pictures and then uh, have after pictures ready to go. This was a left CRPS hand. Do I go forward here? Mm -hmm. uh, this was Christina from Canada's right foot. She had full body, actually, she had upper body as well. So you guys can see the before and after. She was actually one of the worst cases we ever treated. Before and after, left leg. Before and after, feet. If you look closely, you can tell that it really is the same person. Right foot, she graduated not too long ago. Being able to stand on tippy toes is a really big deal to this patient. She was a teenager. Another right foot. This was Stella from Australia, mm -hmm. right foot. She recently attended her prom and she was able to wear high heels. By the way, Jackie, how she was on, can also wear high heels up on your heels just yet. This was Victorine from Belgium before and after. You can see that right knee turning in. We look a lot for that muscular weaknesses in the limbs, abnormal absorption of force. And um, more than just focusing on taking the pain away, we correct those patterns. Look at that right knee and how it turned out. By the way, she's a professional volleyball player. She had right, sorry, left ankle CRPS. And now um, she looks like an Amazon and she can jump four feet into the air off a concrete floor. This was Christine, Christina, um, a case very she's from Canada. Um, this is her before with a typical at home picture and this shows her rock climbing about two months ago. Uh, I still look at this and think how incredible this just does not get old. All right, so I am so lucky to have 
my sister by my side. She is an absolute expert in what she does. Um, she is greater than any doctor I've ever met at picking up on things in blood work that may have been missed. And she also has become an expert at recognizing those patterns that other people aren't seeing. It is good to work with you. It's definitely interesting. No day is boring, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of fun in here. Before I get started, we had one question in there. Um, somebody wanted you to define what you said was remission. Just a drop in pain, complete resolution of pain, some return of function, all return of function. What do you consider as a success? For me personally, full remission means and has no signs or symptoms of CRPS left. Not only that, but they don't have to live wrapped in bubble wrap. They don't need to take medication anymore. They don't have any pain. And they're able to go back to what they love to do, whether that is horseback riding. We have an equestrian patient here from Australia right now. Um, volleyball playing, cheerleading, um, gymnastics. These three things, by the way, we have three patients in remission doing again. Uh, so for me, uh, I think life's precious and you should be able to live without those limitations. Now, do I think that it has no value if you come in in a 10 out of 10 pain and now your worst day is a two? I do not. I think that's, but if I had my way, every single patient would not just have their life back but be able to look back and say, CRPS did bring me gifts because it's like a near death experience. You realize what life means, how much it's worth not to be in pain and um, flowers smell better and food tastes better and love feels better. Everything is, is more precious. Thank you. Um, some of the things that we see that I'm looking for, my role in the clinic mainly is to remove obstacles to treatment. So I take a patient and we look through blood work going all the way back two to three years. We may have to do a little bit extra. We don't use the very expensive tests. We go look for patterns and obstacles to treatment. So some of the biggest obstacles to treatment that we get in here are the things like malnutrition. A lot of our patients come in with uh, co-conditions like gastroparesis, which makes it really difficult to eat. Nausea, vomiting, um, underweight, they have low blood pressure, low blood sugar, low nutrient status in general. Um, we see low vitamin D levels because apparently you guys never go outside. A bunch of vampires. So there are a few things that we have to fix on a nutritional level and you have to do it in a way that is possible for people. So one of the things we're very cautious about is that we don't overwhelm you with you know, some of the patients I get from other treatment programs that we inherit, they will come in with a list of 14 medications and then 28 supplements. Well, it's really hard to feed you when you're like a cancer patient, all you eat is pills all day long. So we have to really pare down what it is that we do for me to four to five products at a time where we tackle the first thing and we fix that then we have you stuck those supplements and we move you to the next round and the next round. So we work in phases to move you through the treatment to remove obstacles like malnutrition, infections, um, just weak systemic well-being. And then when they are done with their magic, then we have to talk about how do we keep you healthy when you go home? How do we get you to where you can get infections again and not flare? How do we keep you in remission? That's the tough part. So, um, Dr. Hanley, let's talk a bit about the viral infections because I feel like that is so big. What are the most common ones and how do you believe they impact CRPS patients? The infections that we've seen most often is viral. I would say that's number one for us is chronic viral infections. 
things like uh, the Epstein-Barr virus, uh, a lot of the herpes viruses in general. Um, we do have some hepatitis patients, but for the most part, um, cytomegalovirus as well as another big one. Then bacterial infections, they present a little bit different than the viral patients where you learn to identify them almost before you do this. Uh, which way are you going to go? Uh, one of the things for you guys out there in electrical therapies in the past, if we didn't do well with those, we tend to see bacterial infections there. We do get some patients online, not a lot. Um, I think it gets studied a whole lot more than what warrants what I see what is actually positive. Um, those infections, if you ask me how it works, they live in the vagus nerve. There's been some studies done that says that a lot of these infections live within the vagus nerve, and it causes kind of a system-wide auto, autoimmune condition, really. Um, some of the conditions that we see that people will come in that, and it's not a misdiagnosis, it's a correct diagnosis, but a lot of our patients with CRPs also have EDX, which is Ehlers Danlos, um, connective tissue issues in general. That is why it's so difficult to draw blood on these patients because the connective tissues have changed and they're really hard. If you stick them, blood vessels will roll. Um, we see POTS, which is uh, dizziness when you change position, issues with heart rate regulation gastroparesis, mast cell activation, um, adrenal fatigue, lots of anemia. Can you think of some more? Migraines. Yeah, it's very um, common. Brain fog, a lot of brain fog. Uh, fibromyalgia will sometimes overlap. Um, we have a new theory. It's an early hypothesis. Um, so please keep in mind it is an hypothesis. But we see so many CRPS patients that have, um, you know, the cold or the hot. Um, erythromyalgia is another one, mm -hmm. the formation of the blood vessels, um, bruising all over the body. Uh, a lot of time with our gastroparesis patients, the superior mesenteric artery is being compressed behind a ligament, and that is part of the gastroparesis. And the only way you're going to catch that is if you do uh, a CT scan with a 3D view of that CT scan with a radiologist that, know that knows what they're looking for. Um, so we suspect that a lot of complex regional pain syndrome patients also have some genetic variants of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. There's a big overlap between the two and that affects the connective tissue and that explains actually Phlebotomist Sarah is incredibly gifted. And she said, you know, man, when I went through my phlebotomy training, they said, maybe once or twice a year you're gonna run into this. Don't worry about it. And she said, every single patient here, I'm <laughs> running into this. And um, POTS is another thing where you have this pressure in the veins, you know, affecting your blood pressure, rising and dropping, and connective tissue involvement would make so much sense with that. The leaky gut, which is part of the connective tissue, the bladder, constant yes. bladder infections and interstitial cystitis. Thickening of the uterine and the ovarian lining. So PCOS, endometriosis, um, I would say about 80% of our female patients come in with a diagnosis of either one or both of those conditions. On birth control, because if you have cycles with that, your flares just get so terrible that most of them just don't want cycles anymore. Uh, lots of gallbladder issues where the cytologic studies, if they happen to cut a piece of that off and send it away for study, will show inflammation in the linings of the gallbladder. So what we see is they get all of the symptoms of gallbladder issues Yet if you have the gallbladder removed, those symptoms don't go away. Before we knew what it was, we called it the ghost gallbladder issue. If there are any of you out there that a gallbladder that 
are getting removed. Don't do it. Hold on to it now. You know, if you have it in one limb, it is always possible through something like that to spread it. So our best advice is as little intervention as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have to go through all the precautions um, while your nervous system is uh, in this dangerous phase to prevent a spread. Um, and don't ever be intimidated by a doctor that tells you, no, it's going to be okay. Um, you, you guys get very intimidated by your doctors. And I tell my patients, the same count for me. I am your employee. I am working for you. It is my job to help you. And it is also my job to listen to you and to believe you when you say you think something is wrong, or you sense something inside of your body. So don't ever be bullied by a doctor. If a doctor is not treating you with respect or listening to you or have a good understanding or at least the willingness to have an open mind and to learn about your condition, shop for another doctor. Go find somebody who cares about your outcome. Um, that is probably one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you. The other one is um, don't give up hope. Hold on to your hope. You might watch this tonight and think, well, it is impossible for me to fundraise, to get to Arkansas. And so many of our patients had a journey that started for that. Uh, we do have a media package available with press releases. If you can get your story into your local newspaper with a fundraising link attached to it, uh, that is a fantastic way to get your story out there and get the public to care. The public actually deeply cares about CRPS. I mean, come on, it is everybody's worst nightmare. You have an innocent injury or surgery and then your limb blows up and you feel like you're on fire. So um, the public has a want to learn more about this condition and a deep empathy for it. Um, that being said, I do want to open the floor for some questions before uh, I do my last portion of the conversation. You're going to be going to ask some of these questions. We didn't touch much on the bladder issues, so maybe circle back to that. But you guys have time. Yeah. Right, or you're free to do it now, and I could come back in a second. Either way. <laughs> no, it's good. Let's tackle some questions. I like questions. Perfect. So there have been so many questions in the chat, and a large number of the questions you have already answered about insurance, uh, location, remission, and items like that. So I'm definitely on the hunt for a few newer questions. If you have any, please leave those in the chat. I did see one that asked, and I hope hope I did not miss this, but why is treatment for 12 weeks? Is there a specific reason for the length of that treatment? Why isn't it shorter? Why isn't it longer? Well, that is something we have learned through trial and error too. You know, we've had patients try to cut it short and then that didn't work. And so my rule of thumb when, before I'm comfortable to release a patient from treatment is that there uh, is zero pain level for about two weeks. Um, and then I feel, you know, better about sending them home. It's a little bit traumatic if you were in this cocoon with other um, patients and staff that are so loving and caring and we have so much fun in this clinic. It, it's just a loving environment to then go home to the place where you were sick. Um, one of our patients that just graduated, uh, Maria, who's a very gifted photographer from Atlanta, uh, wrote us and said she rung the bell a week ago Thursday and she said I walked into my bedroom and saw all these bible verses around my bed and saw where I spent my life in this bed and just collapsed to the floor crying so there is something about having to go back to the place where you were sick for so long there's almost a post-traumatic stress associated with that so you have to be really strong for us to let you fly and leave the nest now have you treated any crps warriors um, at sparrow clinic who are currently pregnant uh, or who are pregnant while they are at sparrow clinic <laughs> i guess i should say yes <laughs> we have i can think of at least two um, it complicates matter, matters a little bit because, of course, we cannot do any of our electric therapies. Right. 
um, they're contraindicated or many of our tests, you just have to be so super careful. And so we um, vagus nerve stimulation, but still accept patients when they're pregnant because of course, if anything goes wrong and you have to have a C-section um, or go through a traumatic birth and you have active CRPS, um, that, would, that could turn out badly. And the last thing I want for any mom is to hold this wonderful new life and not to be able to fully enjoy her baby because she's in horrific pain or has to not face a spread. So we have both face, had pregnant patients that did really well. And then we had several patients that went on to have healthy pregnancies. One of them is a from Tulsa, Oklahoma, who had full body CRPS. Um, at one point she was bedridden and her husband had to wash her hair and brush her teeth. She was really bad. And she had a little girl and all she ever wanted was another baby. And she had a healthy baby boy and then got pregnant with twins naturally wow. and had them <laughs> naturally and doing great. Her remission is solid, no signs of moving out of remission. So for women out there who think I have to give up on my dream to have a child, um, I have seen other women do it. Uh, we have a saying, you only have to see one white crow to know that not all crows are black. And that's your white crow. If one other person can do it, it's a human body, you guys. We're kind of designed the same. You can do it too. That's awesome. I really like that quote. I've never heard it before. I'm going to have to use that somewhere else. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I love it. So there are a few questions in the chat. I think this one's from Aaron, who was asking about blood analysis. Uh, is Sparrow Clinic willing to provide treatment based on blood analysis that's done virtually, especially now during COVID-19? We do a lot of that right now. I will preface that and say it's not a standalone treatment. Now, right now, we're kind of forced in this situation for a lot of our patients from other countries, especially. That's really the only option we have. We do offer that service where we receive your blood work via encrypted lines and then analyze it. And we do Zoom calls like this where we set up a personalized tre treatment package for you with different phases and supplements. And then we touch base with you about every eight to 12 weeks to make sure that you progress as you should. We also have a two day program that we offer uh, for people to dip their toes or come check us out to see if we're real. Um, so you come in on a Wednesday and do blood analysis I would rather you do it with an experienced phlebotomist if you've had issues with blood draws in the past. And then Dr. Hunley analyzes your blood work the next day. You meet with her, you meet with myself, and you get to spend time in the clinic and meet patients. Then you'll get to see someone ring the bell and graduate. We usually do that on Thursdays. Perfect. I always love watching the ring the bell question or not questions, but ring the bell videos on Instagram. They always make me super happy when I see those. I'm always like double tapping. <laughs> <laughs> you. I love those moments yes, so much. Definitely. So um, another question in the chat that has come up, of course, multiple times uh, tonight is a lot of people have been asking about the cost of attending Sparrow Clinic. Absolutely, guys. So um, I'm very upfront with the cost. Now, keep in mind, this number can vary, right? So this is an on average guess. Uh, for the 12 weeks that you're here, on average, it's about $30,000, which is an amount, right, when you hear it. And I absolutely get that. But again, keep in mind, it's one third of most pain management programs. And we have a staff of 22 people with incredibly expensive um, technologies. And you don't just come in for one treatment every day. You're in and out of one treatment after the other, after the other, after the other. And so it's a very intense program. But I would say that about 75% of our patients actually do intense fundraising in the one year to six months prior to coming in. Um, a fantastic resource is the Burning Limb Foundation that started by Philip Robert, one of our ex-patients, 
Um, they give seed money to patients for care uh, on a waiting list basis. So uh, there are resources out there, people that are starting to support us more to try to get more fundraising going. Um, and I definitely love the Burning Limb Foundation. They are awesome. I feel like I've learned about so many organizations in the CRPS world. They're all awesome. Uh, another question that I have that's been, you know, appearing in the chat is about the success rate at Sparrow Clinic. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So um, about nine months ago, I did an informal poll. And, and the reason for the poll was to see when people graduated, when they rung the bell, did they stay well? Because that's a question that haunts you, right? Um, some of our patients are better and they don't ever want to talk to me again. It's not that they're mad at me, but they will want to leave that life behind. They don't want to talk to incoming patients. They don't want to be on the pages. They don't want their videos up. They just want to go live. And so I really had to reach out to that people and, you know, face that success rate. Uh, because it, it was in the back of my mind. Now, people ring the bell when they feel that they have achieved the goal that they came here to reach. That is not always 100% remission, but that is always something that the patient is massively proud of. And I'm not talking about 50% less. Normally, in that instance, they will not ring the bell. I would say that the vast majority of our patients, at least... Eight out of 10 people do ring the bell when they graduate from care. Uh, and of that group, because we didn't check in with the people that didn't graduate or left after two weeks, we only checked in with that group, 84% of them reported ongoing success and remission. So of that group, that was a high number. Um, I can think of dozens and dozens and dozens of cases of people that have gone into remission that's not to say that it's going to work for every single person. Um, I wish it did, and that's what drives me, is, is to hit that 100%, but we certainly see a lot of miraculous things. And that miracle happens inside of your body, your doctors inside of you, we're just unblocking so that it can get to work and heal from within. Um, in our community, there's this feeling and belief that we have to intervene, you have to get a spinal cord stimulator, you have to numb the pain, interfere with the pain. I say no, you have to get the body to function better. Figure out where it went wrong, fix that and let it heal. I like that. Dr. Honey always says, what do you say about the answers? You don't have all the answers. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she has this amazing quote that you said in our documentary, uh, we don't have the best shot. all the answers, but right now, as far as we know, we we're, are your best shot. We're your best shot, and we won't stop until we get all of the answers. Um, you know, we constantly take our newest challenge, and we will brain a bunch of it's not just the two of us. We've got doctors that we work with, fabulous people all over the country that we share information with, and we will brainstorm at night, usually late at night, which I hate because this is up. Send texts back and forth about it. You see, they just discovered the organ last night, and then we'll go back and forth. This happened last night. <laughs> it's very late. And people will tag things on and thoughts, and then that starts all rolling on a whole nother line. So I do think there is a few things we haven't figured out yet. But I think we're a whole lot closer than what we were just four years ago. And, you know, four years before that, I wasn't even a part of that. I wanted no part of this. It was all too complicated for me. I just noticed a question where doctors have you trained in New York. Um, we did train one doctor in New York City, and I will certainly post his name. But guys, Please listen to me. It's not that I'm selfish or I want you to come here. It's that I know I have seen hundreds of patients that just doing the Baker's miracle alone is not enough. Um, that's what sometimes 
watch your videos and pick a thing here, pick a thing here. And you kind of want to treat it like a buffet and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And then you'll say, ah, their stuff doesn't work. It really is a system that was designed to work together to give you the maximum chance of success. And so the doctor in New York would be fantastic if you came here for care and then you can come up, go home to follow up care, you know, keep that vagus nerve open and um, build on everything you've done here. Definitely. So I did see another question from Kelly who asked, are caregivers um, allowed to visit the clinic as well, you know, once the CRPS warrior is there for treatment? Absolutely. Tell us a little bit what the clinic looks like on an average day. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it drives my sister crazy because yes. I love <laughs> chaos and drama. I call it organized chaos and that's her thing. Uh, we have a lot of laughter. We have quite a few therapy dogs here that are in-house. Too many. <laughs> but like Hippopotamus is a little black dog, Tammy's dog, they have a lie in people's laps. Uh, we have a waiting room that's open with couches and um, people sit down, they eat lunches out there, they visit. Um, we have mostly open treatment areas unless you're in a private therapy like lymphatic or scar tissue. And then we have caregivers out there because the caregivers need support. If it's a mom or a wife or a husband or um, you name it, you know, they need support too. They need to talk to other caregivers if they're close to you. So yes, we encourage that you bring at least one person. But then again, we've had people that had no one to come with, uh, came as far as Europe or Australia. And they did okay too because you form a family here. Definitely. We have our average day starts around 8.30, 9 o'clock is when most patients get here. I saw a question if it's a sleep in clinic. No, we're not like a hospital. And around 8.30 in the morning and then we give you therapies with little breaks to rest and eat because we make you eat very frequently. You're going to burn a lot of calories while you're here. Um, most of our therapies are done by 3 o'clock of few of our patients that are close to graduation, those people that are a little bit further along the healing pathway will have some later afternoon therapies. Pretty much by five o'clock, the whole clinic shuts down. And then we do that four days a week. So you get three day weekends and we get a lot of questions about that too. That recovery is very much needed over the weekend. Oh, I just saw my favorite question. If it is so successful, why aren't other doctors doing this? Thank you for asking that. Um, well, the answer is, I don't really know. But <laughs> at least one of the procedures I invented myself. And um, I worked with a doctor from Milan, Italy, and we, um, you know, developed it together. And I've only taught 20 other doctors and I know they're not implementing our systems yet. So um, again, it's a question of all the different therapies going into 15 different systems and then the training of the staff that goes into it. Man, it took 10 years to, to have built the system from the ground up. And even now I'll have people, I have had a lot of successful business people as patients and they'll say, what can we do? How can we get your clinic to other places? And then I say to them, look, you've been here. So bear with me. We'll say, okay, I know, I know what you're going to say. But if a team comes in, they will have to train alongside us for at least six months on the floor. The doctor and some of the head therapists for more like okay, our clinic that same results. It's kind of like a scalpel, right? Scalpel is amazing. You give it to a four-year-old, they can do a lot of damage. Um, you give it to a gifted surgeon, they can do really amazing things with the scalpel. So it just depends on how you um, apply it. And again, um, I'm not that well known, except for doctors now here, and they're starting to refer to me in the medical world because we are not published yet. We will be next year once we complete our study for Kent State. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> social media. I'm just creeping and I'm peeking at the questions as well. And I just wanted to tell you guys, 
If you go to our website, it's www.thespiroclinic, so T-H-E-S-P-E-R-O clinic.com. And Alexis can probably link that here for you guys as well. There is um, a button on there to fill out a contact form. If you fill out that contact form, we can then email you guys a letter that covers our program in great detail because you can't remember this all off the top of your head. It has all of our therapies listed and it has answers to most every question that you might have about our program. So if you fill out that contact form, we can definitely get that out to you. Thank you. <laughs> definitely. Regarding the name of the doctor in Milan. Uh, Dr. Manuel Mazzini. Definitely. He's a little excited Italian. He's a genius. <laughs> he is a lot of fun to hang out with. Definitely. Well, we've come to the end of the hour, and I know you definitely wanted to mention uh, something else about bladders and also, you know, to end the presentation. Yes. So, really quick, if you have consistent urinary tract infections, you feel like you do, but they're not planning infections, you may have interstitial cystitis, so you're not crazy. That is part of CRPS that we do a lot. And then the other thing is also if that you have urine and you keep testing negative for bacteria, they don't find infections, but you have urine that smells weird and you have a lot of urgency, like you swear the infection is there and nobody can find it. Mold toxicity may be a problem here, which is unfortunately something that we find a lot in our patients. It's one of the things we have to get good at in a hurry. Thank you so much, Alexis. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you to our community and to every patient today listening. Um, Spiro means hope. And our motto is Dom Spiro Spiro, which is Latin for while I breathe, I hope. If nothing else, I hope that you leave our talk tonight with hope in your heart and the knowledge that other people have done it. You can do it too. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a reminder, everyone, this session was recorded and we will, of course, share it with everyone who attended. It's now time for networking and our expo. So head over to the networking to meet other warriors and to our expo to learn more from our sponsors. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a good one. Bye.